a rule of thumb refers to something which can be easily learned and easy to apply in practice these rules are based upon the past practical experiences and are applicable everywhere including investment a very good afternoon to one and all myself dr rishab gupta and in today's session we will be understanding a prominent rule of thumb in the field of finance that is rule of 72 but before going ahead let me ask you one question have you find any trick or any way through which you can determine the time period in which your invested amount will get double at a given annual rate a bit confused so let's find out the solution to it so the rule of 72 came up in the late 15th century by the italian and the francisian mathematician this rule of 72 explains the time period in which your invested amount will get double at a given annual rate of return to put it into the formula this rule comes out to be years to double is equals to 72 divided by expected rate of return let us take one numerical example to understand this formula in a better way let us assume the expected rate of return let us assume the expected rate of return as 8% per annum so by applying this rule of 72 it means 72 divided by 8 this will give you 9 years what does this mean it means that whatever amount you have invested that amount will get double in 9 years so if i have invested 100 rupees it will reaches to 200 in approximate 9 years now alternatively this rule now this rule of 72 can also helps you to estimate the expected rate of return which you expect from your investment by dividing 72 by the number of years in which you wish to double your money let us again take one example if i am saying if i'm saying that the number of years in which you wish to double your money is 8 years which means the expected rate of return comes out to be 9% per annum so the investment in which you are planning to invest must yield an expected rate of return of 9% per annum this we have already covered up now there are three important consideration in this rule of 72 number 1 for making this rule of 72 applicable you always need to take the interest rate in a numeric form and not in the decimal form so if i am saying it is 8% then it should be a single digit that is 8 and it should not be 0.08 similarly if i am saying 7% then it should be 7 and it should not be 0.07 number 1 the second is this rule is applicable only on the compound interest rate that is on something that compound every year so friends there are two types of interest rate which are there one is the simple interest rate and the second one is the compound interest rate so i am noting it in this way
this is your case one case one of simple interest rate let us say let us say that i have invested rupees 100 as of now and the simple interest rate is 10 percent per annum which means i will be getting 10 rupees in year one again 10 rupees in year two and so and so forth so in this way my invested amount will get double in approximately 10 years however in case of compound interest rate it means i will be getting interest of rupees 10 in year 1 which is 10 percent of 100 rupees in year 2 i will be getting 10 percent of 90 rupees that is 100 rupees minus the interest which is 90 10 percent of 90 is 9 rupees In 3, it will be 8.1 and so and so forth. So, in case of compound interest rate, I can apply the rule of 72 to find out the time period in which my invested amount of 100 rupees will get double. This uh, rule of 72 only gives you precise result when the interest rate comes up in a range of 5 to 12 percent. What does this mean? Does it mean that we can't apply the rule of 72 if the interest rate is 2 percent or if the interest rate is 15 percent? The answer is yes. Yes, we can apply. Let us check one example. So, I have told you this rule of 72 is applicable in a specific range of 5 to 12 percent, which means your results will be more precise when the interest rate falls in this range. However, if I am taking the interest rate of 2 percent, then instead of applying this rule of 72, I can apply rule of 71. It means for every 3 percent decline, For every 3% decline in the interest rate, I need to deduct minus 1 from 72 and for every 3% increase in the interest rate, I need to add plus 1. So, in a way, this rule will become rule of 71 in case the interest rate is 2 percent and in case the interest rate is 15 percent it will be 72 plus 1 that is 73. Now the question arises that how this figure 72 arise. Now there is a simple logic. The logic lies in the concept of present value and the future value. So there is a famous formula for understanding the relationship between the future value and the present value. Future value which is FV, PV stands for present value, R stands for rate of interest and T stands for time period. This is a function which explains the relationship between future value, present value, interest rate and the time period. We will apply the same formula to understand that how we derive this 72 figure. Let us take one example. If I am saying the present value is 10 rupees, future value is 20 rupees. To put this information in this formula, it comes out to be 20 is equal to 10. 
ट्वेंटी इज इक्वल टू टेन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई वन प्लस आर रेस टू पावर टी विच अगेन दिस इज द फाइनल इक्वेशन नाउ वी विल टेक लॉग रिथम ऑन बोथ द साइड Taking logarithm on both the side, it will be log two is equals to t log one plus r, which means r t. We have simply apply the logarithm properties to compute this final figure of log two is equals to r t, which again means time period is equals to log two divided by r. Now the well, natural logarithm value of log two is this is the natural logarithm value zero point six nine three one four seven. So putting it into the formula, it comes out to be. This is the final derivation. Now you can convert it into the integer form, which is sixty-nine point three one divided by r. Now one of the prominent question which may strike in your mind that why we are using this seventy-two figure? Why not we use sixty-nine point three one? The answer is very much simple. There are two major reasons. Number one, the value of sixty-nine point three one is difficult to remember. In comparison to seventy-two, second is the number seventy-two is divisible by almost many numbers. So seventy-two is divisible by two, three, four, six, eight, and nine. So that's where the rule of seventy-two has gained popularity in a finance area. Now the question arises: That can we apply the rule of seventy-two to equity shares or to stocks? We know that the equity shares have a variable return. We know that the equity shares have a variable returns. Their returns keeps on fluctuating, so we cannot apply the rule of seventy-two. However, using this rule, we can compute the expected rate of return by dividing seventy-two by the number of years in which I wish to double my money. Which means, if I wish to double my money in eight years, then we can apply the seventy-two divided by eight. So I must look for those shares or those financial instrument which will generate an expected rate of return of nine percent per annum. Next issue is: Can can we apply the rule of seventy two to almost to macroeconomic data or to some uh, data as like inflation and all? The answer is yes. Rule of seventy two have various application. So we can apply for the population. If I am saying that my population is growing, if I am saying my population is growing at a rate of three percent per annum, which means three percent compounded annually, which means seventy-two divided by three, that is twenty-four years. So if my population is growing at a rate of three percent per annum. It will get double up in approximately 24 years. Similarly, if I am saying that the inflation is growing at a rate of 3 percent per annum, which means the current purchasing power of your money will get half in almost 24 years. So these are the application of this rule of 72, which we can apply in various macroeconomic data in terms for inflation for population. So, if a mutual fund is charging an annual expenses of three percent, it means that the principal amount will get half in almost twenty-four years. So, this is the important application of rule of seventy-two, and that's all. We'll meet you in my next session. Have a nice day.